Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast. And this week, we have a very special guest on the show to do something Good Morning Magic has never done before. Welcome to the show, Chase, who you might also know as Mana Curves. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Super excited to have you here, Chase. So really fast before we get into the meat of the show, What's your background? Like, what do you do with Magic? How long have you been playing for? Tell us about yourself a little bit. Yeah, so um, I've been playing, um, I believe, five years. In December of uh, 2020, we're in the new year, so it feels pretty good. My first pre-release was uh, Shadows. I uh, am a Commander content creator and Twitch streamer. I stream Paper Magic on my channel, as well as uh, deck building, Commander deck building. And I also write articles for TCG Player about collaborative deck building and deck building in general. Yeah, her stuff is great. I've actually even been on her stream a couple of times, so go check it out. I'll put a link uh, around here somewhere, and you can go uh, watch the last time I was on there battling with a Commander Legends pre-con, no less. So it's a really good time. But in addition to her plethora of work and her amazing commander games, there is one thing that Chase is extremely well known for in the Magic community. And you might have noticed it if you're looking closely as she was talking. And it is her incredible makeup stylings. Chase, what are you wearing today? So uh, today I have a uh, Chandra inspired makeup look that I did. Um, I wanted to kind of represent my favorite planeswalker uh, in the entirety of magic. Uh, so I decided to do a little Chandra inspired eyeshadow look with a little matching uh, lip as well. So first of all, how do you even come up with these ideas, right? You've got so many amazing looks. When you want to go after a card, like what is your inspiration for, for pulling that into the makeup world? So typically what I like to do is when starting out with uh, a magic inspired uh, makeup look is I really want to take, uh, you know, pieces of the card. I want to see if there's artistic representation that I can do. Is there a face paint that the character and the artist is wearing? Is there any sort of distinguishable pattern that I can represent on my face that if I uh, showed it to somebody, they would go, that looks like that. So for instance, if I wanted to do a Jace eyes to add a look, I would try to get like the detailing on his cloak onto my eye, either in a form of eye eyeshadow or maybe even an eyeliner or something just really uh, eye-catching that you know you can pull and say okay I know what that character is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually play a video of Chase doing this makeup a little bit earlier before the show happened and we're gonna talk about exactly how you can do it at home and what her process is so let's roll the tape. All right Chase so kick us off where do you begin? So uh, typically what I like to do when I start my makeup looks, everybody starts differently on their face where they feel comfortable. I like to start in the eye area. So I did my eyebrows off camera because watching that is extremely boring. And as a natural redhead, I have very fair eyebrows. So it takes me a while to sculpt them. It's not very fun to watch. Um, but then what I do is while I'm doing my eyebrows, I like to prep and prime my face. So typically what I'll do is I'll use one of my many primers that I have, which really adheres the makeup to your skin. So it doesn't kind of slide off or melt off throughout the day, which can happen depending on where you live and the weather and the temperature and the climate. Um, and then after that, I uh, pretty much do a layer of uh, foundation on my eyelids and kind of let that be the base for the pigment of the eyeshadow to stick to. For um, my foundation, I'm actually a very weird person with foundation. When I go on camera, I tend to use a full coverage foundation um, because you're going to be really saturated with lights and you're going to have a lot of light on you and you know depending on the quality of your camera you're going to be people are really going to see you so typically I'll tend to do a high coverage foundation when I'm streaming so typically what I'll do is I'll start to lay out the sort of gradient map on my eye here so you go in in your very corner and I laid in in some pink pigment and I pack the pigment in rather than blending it out you're using a wet base on your eyes so you really want the color to kind of sit on top of it and kind of sit there as like a little base before you blend out later. So I'll typically start with a base of yellow and kind of pat that in with a brush and let it sit before I eventually start to uh, pack in some orange and then gradient in together to blend it to look like a nice transition. You want to have a nice uh, clean brush when you transition pigments. It's gonna look like a harsh line at first when you layer them next to each other. But once you layer them into each other, you're gonna actually take another clean brush, you're gonna clean it off, and you're going to take the darker pigment and pull it into your eye towards the softer pigment. And you're gonna kind of do a little bit of a battle in between the pigments, unfortunately. And even with the best of makeup, it's gonna take some time and a little bit of practice too to get that nice gradient. Um, you just kind of go back and forth between dark and light until you find that nice, beautiful transition on camera. 
So after you lay the pigment down, you're going to want to start blending one at a time, but you don't want to do each color and then gradient because that's going to take a lot of brush cleaning. It's going to be very annoying. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of time out of your, um, your day to do this look. So uh, once you lay down your first two pigments, you're just going to want to transition them as smooth as you can in between pigments. Then as you can see, I have a very triangular point on each side of my eye. And what I did was you're just going to take a very soft, flat brush and you're just going to draw like a guideline upwards just a simple guideline upwards. And then you can just start filling in the lines like you would if you were drawing. It has taken many, many, many a year <laughs> to get the beautiful straight lines. But uh, even in the video, I struggled a little bit and I really do recommend that if you feel like you can't get a really good line, I like to view them as, you know, they don't have to be scissor, uh, sisters, they can be cousins. Uh, so they don't have to look exactly like they can be a little unique. And I even took some uh, a makeup pad and some micellar water just to kind of carve out the nice sharp line that I wanted to get going there. Typically you'll get eyeshadow from a palette, uh, but these I actually use are amazing. They're eyeshadow pigments. They are very volatile to use because uh, it's loose powder in a teeny tiny little jar. Um, and uh, <laughs> they are very, very, very bright and very pigmented, meaning that, you know, if you uh, put them on your face, they're not going to, um, you know, look chalky or tend to kind of blend in with your skin. They're going to stay very bright and um, you know, uh, fluorescent. Actually, they even are UV activated. So if I got a black light, I could, uh, you know, hold it up to my face. I don't have one with me, but it would glow um, because that's Whoa. the kind of pigment that I picked up, which is very cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, they're very cool. So with brushes, I kind of go all over the place. I really like brushes. The really good thing about makeup brushes is that the packaging says what they are. This is a brush used to contour. This is a brush used for powder use them for these things <laughs> and that has helped me so much because uh you know having uh having a little bit of a guideline uh based off of uh, what your brushes say can be super helpful and figuring out you know what if it's best for you so i'm taking out my foundation and i'm slowly dripping that onto either side of my cheeks and just doing a couple drops really kind of figuring out what kind of coverage i want and then i am just slowly taking out my beauty blender and really blending it into my skin it looks like i am actually hitting my skin but i promise you it's a soft sponge you know, feels really nice and even like a little face massage. And you're just going to take it and blend it out until you blend it towards your eye where that little line mark is from when you were doing your uh, concealer on your eye for your pigment. I'm just doing that all across my face, on my nose, got to get into the nose creases here. Otherwise, there's going to be a little bit of a line, making sure that you get it nice around your lips and even just bringing it down onto your chin and neck as well, as well as your forehead. I typically have a part in my hair, so I like to lift up my hair just to make sure I get it all and I don't have a weird spot. And sometimes I like to blend it up into my hairline. It's my part. Otherwise, there's going to be a weird difference of transition in here as well, depending on the day and how your scalp looks. So the next what I am doing is I am taking my bronzer. Typically, people like to do their bronzer on top of their powder. However, I like to kind of do it actually on top of my foundation. So I'm just taking my uh, angled uh, sculpting brush and I'm slowly going in down on my jawline to define my jawline. And then I do a little bit of a little lemon pucker with my lips to find where my cheekbones are and then slowly sculpt downwards with the bronzer as well, kind of um, blending that out to make sure I have not a harsh line on my face. Then I go up around towards the top of my head to make sure I have a nice little um, little arch area as well of color. And then I take a beauty blender and just blend that out to make sure the color is not too harsh and too dark on my skin. So next I am setting my face with my uh, airspun translucent powder. Um, I'm literally just sort of uh, grabbing my, my uh, brush and doing a nice sculpted clean line and then blending upwards. Um, typically you can start to bake your face if you want to, if you wanna go a little bit heavier with the powder around your face. However, I wanted to do sort of a softer uh, bake today rather than a heavier bake since I was doing sort of a translucent uh, softer look with my foundation. So I'm just going around the entirety of my face and just spreading the powder around everywhere making sure everything looks nice and blended in and everything is set in place now i know a little bit about makeup from the cosplay world but nowhere near as much as an expert like chase so if you were also confused about the term baking don't worry i had to look it up too and what i found is actually pretty cool so you apply a layer of foundation and concealer as normal and then powder and then you wait you actually let the heat from your skin warm it up and set it for you hence the term baking. Pretty cool, right? Anyway, sorry for interrupting. Back to you, Chase. 
So the final steps that I am doing are applying blush to uh, my face. I am grabbing two different colors and blending them together to get a nice peachy color that I really want to help make the, the warm tones in my eyes pop out. I'll typically do the little lemon pucker again just to find like the nice little apples of my cheeks and go uh, start at the bottom and work my way up kind of doing a nice little blend, just finding that area. Uh, you might notice me saying, that looks a little bit too dark. And I go back in with my translucent powder and make sure that looks nice and light and soft and not too terribly clownish. Uh, even though I like to act like a clown, sometimes I don't like to look like one. <laughs> So this final step I am doing is applying my mascara. Uh, depending on how you want your eyes to look, you can use a lash curler. Um, I'm typically just going in and doing just my soft mascara on the top and bottom lashes. Um, very scary sometimes if you're a new makeup user using a mascara wand, uh, hitting your eye with that is very painful. <laughs> um, it really is. Unfortunately, you have to do that thing where you try not to cry and you kind of stare downward so your tears don't mess up your makeup. So it's always a fun and interesting time doing, <laughs> doing makeup, just adding the mascara, making sure it looks nice and dry, and then going over with a final uh, pop of highlighter on my cheeks, as well as on the ridge of my nose. And any lipstick tips as their people are applying their lipstick? Uh, just go with the uh, natural line of your lips. If you feel like you want a little bit of guideline, I recommend using a lip liner, uh, going with a color similar to the lipstick that you're using. Uh, overlining your lips is also fun too, whatever you feel comfortable with doing, whatever you want to make your look pop. Um, but go with, uh, typically what I've discovered with makeup is that if you're going to do a very dramatic eye, you want to go a little softer on the lip. I actually wanted to do a very bright red today, but I thought it would look a little bit, um, cluttered. So I actually went a little bit softer, uh, to have a nice contrast. Chase, where'd the eyelashes come from? <laughs> I uh, love to use uh, false lashes in a lot of my makeup looks. They have a lot of beautiful volume and are a very much a statement piece in your looks. They, they typically tend to pop very much so when you're streaming and it's a nice, beautiful look. Um, however, uh, filming them is not quite fun. So I decided to do a beautiful little transition that looks totally neat and natural, almost like magic. Well, and this final look really is fantastic. And looking at it, I mean, I'll put up the Chandra right here on the screen. It super is inspired by those flames. It really looks fantastic. Thank you. And if I'm brand new to the makeup world and I like need to learn a lot of this stuff from scratch and I don't quite know the basics, is there a tutorial service that you recommend going to or any channel in particular that you love for that? Yes, so I actually have a YouTuber that I love for the basics. She does everything from basics to the wildest, craziest look under the sun. I recommend Nikki Tutorials. She's an absolutely fantastic uh, makeup artist and YouTuber. Uh, she does a lot of really wonderful work. Well, thank you, Chase, so much for coming on today. It has been amazing having you. This looks incredible, and I really hope people out there are inspired to give it a try themselves. And tell your friends. Maybe we'll have Chase back again for another episode with some future cool Planeswalker looks. I know I'd love to see it. Chase, is there anything you'd like to say before we wrap up the show or anything you want to tell the wonderful viewers out there? Uh, one thing I'd like to tell you is if you think you can't do makeup, that is wrong. You can totally do it. Uh, anybody can wear makeup, anybody. And it's just fun to sit down and experiment with really fun colors and express yourself in a new and exciting way. Truly fantastic. Well, go check out Chase's stream. It's a great time. Go follow her on Twitter. She's hilarious. And I'm so glad to have had her on the show. Good luck with your makeup out there, everyone. I would love to see your styles. Feel free to tweet them at me and Chase. We'll take a look at them. And I will talk with you again very soon. And in the meantime, may you have plenty of fire in your eyes. You got this. I am only five. It's going to be my first ever Halloween where I get to choose the costume. And so my mom asks me what I want to be. A bear snake. What? A bear snake. Don't you want to be like a character from a movie or a cartoon or a book or, you know, something like that? A bear snake. But Gavin, bear snakes don't exist. Well, let's make one then.